Nima, there are two issues in physics today that many people confuse. One is the fine-tunedness of the universe, or the apparent fine-tuning. The second is something called the anthropic principle, which people assume is the fine-tuning. Now, I want to tease these two apart, and I want to, fo and I want to first focus on the fine-tuning of the universe. How fine-tuned is the universe? At least, uh, if we take the current laws that we know that describe everything to astonishing accuracy, take the standard model of particle physics plus gravity, there's not one experiment to date that contradicts these theories. Everything is wonderful about them. Um, uh, but in this theory, there are a number of indications that some of the parameters are extremely fine-tuned. Um, uh, Two of the parameters, which are very, very fine-tuned, uh, uh, which seem to be extraordinarily fine-tuned, are the energy of the vacuum on the one hand, and, uh, and a parameter that determines the, the masses of all the, uh, uh, or many of the elementary particles on the other hand. Um, these, are, these are two parameters that, uh, that, in order to explain very gross features of our universe, like why is the universe so big, why is gravity so weak, these parameters have to be finely adjusted to incredible accuracy. They have to be adjusted so they have very specific values up to 120 decimal places or out to 30 decimal places. Um, and, uh, and that's just the status quo. You know, in this very successful theory, once we make this very fine adjustment of the parameters, uh, the rest of the theory is in perfect agreement with everything else. Uh, and, uh, but, but this very fine adjustment is necessary. Um, now, those are the most dramatic, those are the most dramatic uh, uh, parameters that seem fine-tuned. When you look in a little more detail, there's at a much, much smaller level, um, but in a number of many, many other parameters, a number of little accidents that, uh, that uh, take place, um, which if those accidents didn't play, take place, our universe would look relatively different as well. These are little accidents in nuclear physics, uh, for example, uh, which allow certain nuclei to exist and other nuclei not to exist, for example, um, that, that allows stars to exist nicely. Um, and uh, anyway, so there's some circumstantial evidence for a much, at a much, much weaker level, also little accidents uh, um, in the other parameters, um, in some of the other parameters. But really, the very, very biggest ones are these two, the energy of the vacuum and the uh, and uh, effectively the parameter that controls the masses of uh, uh, the majority of uh, elementary particles. Now, what are the possible categories of solution to these fine tuning problem? Now, one, as we know, is the so-called anthropic principle. Well, um, uh, before going to the anthropic right. principle, um, uh, most physicists react uh, to to apparent fine tunings by trying to find a mechanism. Uh, mm -hmm. that actually explains why these parameters only appear finely tuned, but aren't actually finely tuned. You see, when you notice a fine tuning, um, I told you that the fine tuning exists if the correct theory is the standard model plus gravity. So one very natural possibility is that that's not the correct theory, uh -huh. that there's something that, that generalizes and comes beyond these theories. And in that more general theory, we understand why this fine tuning is actually not a fine tuning, and in fact, we can compute and see that, that, that it's very natural for the parameter to have the value that it has. And in the, in the recent history of fundamental physics, there have been a number of occasions with, where apparent fine tunings were actually explained, were explained away by finding a bigger theory, uh, that, uh, that allowed you to, to compute the parameters that appeared to be, uh, that appeared to be finely tuned. So that's known as a dynamical uh, explanation. Okay, so so you look at the fine tuning as an as an opportunity for what the next theory should look like in order to explain it without any fine tuning. Um, for instance, in the early part of the last century, uh, physicists were very confused by the fact that if you took the electron um, and the electron they didn't think had any size, well the electron is surrounded by an electric field. That electric field carries energy in it, and if you look at the energy in that electric field, it appears to be infinite. <laughs> And so the electron would, by equals mc squared, the electron should have an infinite mass, which it certainly didn't have. One possibility is, uh, so, so that appears to be um, a colossal 
<laughs> fine tuning. But there was an explanation, which in fact the people in the early part of the century couldn't have known, but that in fact as, as you get closer and closer to the electron, because of quantum mechanics, you start seeing that it's actually surrounded by cloud yeah. of virtual electrons and anti-electrons. Yes. Okay? And that cloud uh, uh, invalidates this, uh, this, this, this computation that tells you there's an infinite amount of energy. Mm. In fact, when you take the cloud into account, the infinity largely goes away and you don't have, uh, and you don't have uh, the same problem. Okay? So, um, so in that case, one could have made a prediction that something should happen at a specific distance away, <laughs> at some specific distance scale, that cuts off this problem, and indeed it did. It was quantum mechanics and positrons, anti-electrons, and so that's, that, that, that worked. And anyway, uh, uh, there, there are less familiar examples of similar phenomena that have happened um, before uh, in the last 20, 30 years. So uh, at least in the last 100 years, every time we've seen a fine tuning, it's been the indication of some new kind of physics that comes mm -hmm. in and removes the fine tuning. Okay? So, so that's one explanation. That's one possible explanation. Um, and there are such possible explanations in the case of the fine tunings that we're talking about for the parameter that controls the masses of the elementary particles. Um, uh, for example, we might discover at short distances that will be probed by the Large Hadron Collider, we might discover supersymmetry or some other new kind of physics that generalizes what we know that removes the fine tuning. What's disquieting is that the, um, the much larger problem, the energy of the vacuum, uh, this 120 order of magnitude fine tuning, we don't have any dynamical mechanism for. Now, maybe we're just not smart enough. Maybe we haven't thought of the right idea yet. Um, but uh, uh, but uh, anyway, we don't have any dynamical explanation for that. There is another kind of explanation, a completely different sort of explanation, um, which uh, uh, which is, for want of a, of, a, of a better term, an environmental one. Okay? Um, and in this sort of explanation, you might find that some parameters uh, uh, that 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 if some parameters control in a very dramatic way what the universe looks like in very long distances, that if they had slightly different values. Uh, we wouldn't be here to observe the universe. Now, um, for this sort of explanation to be a rational scientific explanation, uh, you have to have a huge diversity of environments which sample the different possible values of this constant so that you can say that, yes, you know, this huge range of possibilities is allowed, but only in a tiny subset of them. Uh, do we find ourselves? Because that's the only place where we can be. Uh, here's a very simple example. So we live on a little rock uh, in the vastness of the cosmos. If you if you take uh, the, the the ratio of the volume of the Earth compared to the volume, at least, of the observable universe today, uh, that number is something like one part in ten to the sixty. It's a wow. tiny, tiny number. So, well, what are the chances that we live on this little rock rather than the vast emptiness of the uh, cosmos? Why isn't that a pressing <laughs> problem for <laughs> fundamental physics akin to these fine-tuning problems we're talking about? Well, it's, it's obvious that we can't live anywhere else. Uh, um, and so, uh, so we're obviously not going to live where it's empty. We have to be somewhere where there is some structure. Uh, so uh, we're used to this sort of explanation for apparent amazing accidents in our own universe. And it's possible another sort of, so that's, you might call that an environmental explanation. We can't live in emptiness. Uh, so it's possible that, that uh, if, if our universe, um, or at least uh, the low energy, long distance properties of our universe aren't unique, and there is actually many, many different possible ways that, uh, that, that universes could look at long distances, compatible with the same underlying fundamental theory, um, that, uh, that, uh, and, and, so, so colloquially, if our universe is part of a much vaster multiverse, uh, many universes, many, many different, many, many different universes, and, I, and I, something I want to stress is these are not to be thought of as uh, metaphysical uh, universes, completely disconnected uh, from ours. Uh, the idea is that that in the true unified underlying theory. There is one set of laws. There is one set of uh, there's one set of rules. But those set of rules can manifest themselves at very long distances in a whole variety of ways. Just like there's one set of rules governing water molecules, um, and yet water can manifest itself in many different phases as a, as, as a gas, as a liquid, or as a solid. In the same way, there could be one set of rules governing the laws of nature that could manifest themselves at long distances in lots and lots of different ways. Um, and if that happens, and if all those different manifestations are realized somewhere, then it could be that in the vast majority of those places, the vacuum energy is so large that the universe is accelerating so rapidly that it's empty. 
and that we're only going to find ourselves uh, in a place just like we live on the rock of the Earth rather than an empty space in our universe. In the multiverse, we're only going to find ourselves living in those universes where the uh, just accidentally, completely accidentally, the value of the um, vacuum energy is small enough in order to allow us to to exist. So that's one. That's 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 the uh, that's the anthropic uh, type of explanation, and. Uh, I prefer to call it an environmental explanation because, uh, as, as you see, that particular explanation for the vacuum energy has very little to do with human beings or lions or giraffes or anything. It has very little to do with any definition of life. It has to do with a very binary choice of whether the universe is empty or not. Okay? Uh, and if, if you believe that, that we have to live in a non-empty universe, then that already gives you a, a reason for why the vacuum energy should be so tiny. But for this sort of explanation to make sense, you have to have an enormous variety of uh, universes, many many, many possible universes. And uh, when you and say many, many, you're talking about 10 to the, 10 to the hundreds. hundreds, 10 to the hundreds, uh, at least more than 10 to the 120, which you need so, to solve this, which you need to, to solve the, 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 the uh, right. what you need to be able to accidentally find universe with uh, with a small enough yeah. uh, you, vacuum. Energy. You've talked about a collision course between some of these major factors like fine tuning, like uh, this, the cosmological constant and uh, um, uh, the uh, 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 string theory, landscape with string theory has many different possibilities. Well, how do these work? Quantum gravity, all kind of accelerating universe, all of these factors that are suddenly coming in. I think it, it, we're, we're quite plausibly in a period in, uh, in, in, in fundamental physics now that, that, uh, uh, that, that, at least to me, has the same kind of flavor of crisis as, uh, as, as what was happening in the early part of the last century. Um, on the eve of the revolutions that led to uh, to um, quantum mechanics and uh, and special relativity, and the reason is that observation and theory are on a are on a crash course uh, are on a crash course with each other. On the one hand, um, uh, uh, for example, within 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 particle physics, uh, uh, the main crises we have have to do with the apparent fine tuning of the parameters in the standard model. That leads us to expect that there should be something beyond the standard model, something dramatic beyond the standard model, maybe supersymmetry, maybe something else like it, but which should show up at the Large Hadron Collider. Um, uh, that fact, though, that strategy, that guess for what should happen, um, however, for the last 20 years, has been under growing stress from experiment. Um, not in a way that rules it out or anything like that, but but there was some sense of discomfort that that that, that some effect from all of this physics might have shown up already. So there was some unease in that direction between theory and uh, an experiment. On the other hand, we have this dramatic experimental discovery of the accelerating universe. The accelerating universe opens up a whole can of conceptual worms that are uh, that that uh, that are on a. Uh, Involving quantum gravity, um, and um, we don't understand why the vacuum energy is small. Then, purely internally, theoretically, string theory seems to give us an enormous number of possible long-distance universes. Uh, that fact seems to quite nicely marry with the uh, with the idea uh, that you need lots and lots of universes to find one with a small enough vacuum energy to uh, uh, to to drive the. Uh, uh, in order to understand why our universe is accelerating, but not very, very rapidly. So, um, so these the, these experimental and theoretical facts are all confronting each other, but um, but not not so far with a completely clean either theoretical or experimental story. And uh, uh, but but hopefully, um, given some clues from experiment from the uh, uh, Large Hadron Collider, particularly as well as some cosmological observations. Uh, will we'll, we'll hopefully start settling some of these, these questions and point us in the right direction.